Hello and welcome to your daily dose of Legacy Rambles, where commentary from my older videos that is still interesting and relevant today is re-edited for a new audience. Today we start with the topic, why some people falsely believe I am toxic. Hello Matt, concerned YouTube viewer here. I saw a video on dream cheating and recommended your analysis vid in the comments. Someone replied saying that you were the most toxic individual they had ever seen and had no business in this drama. Do you have any idea why people have that impression of you? I do not believe you to be a particularly toxic or negative person and people thinking that upsets me as a viewer of the YouTube. Sure, so imagine that each and every moment someone is meeting you for the first time at every single point in your life. Every second, one person meets you. Think of all the times in your life that you've had bad moments, down moments, you've snapped at people, been a complete arsehole, embarrassing moments. That first impression will affect how that person views you. They may not stick around, they may not, you know, it's turned off completely, right? I have that all day, every day with my content. Thousands of people right this very moment are seeing me for the first time in some capacity. And there is going to be some portion of those people that come away with a negative opinion of me. And there's nothing I can do about that. Certainly, there are ways to increase or decrease the likelihood of this stuff occurring. But it just comes with the territory. Some people are going to think I'm a toxic person. I am including within this section that people can be given a false impression of me by those who specifically seek to misrepresent me as being toxic via lying or out of context clips. There are things that I do that actually embody me as a person that I wouldn't consider to be evidence of toxicity. But another person would absolutely completely disagree. Like that I talk about politics at all. Some people would be like, that's fucking toxic, my dude. You're a fucking content creator, get the fuck out. People have these very strange standards as to what they believe people should or should not talk about or how they should or should not conduct themselves. And potentially they just disagree with how I conduct myself. So it's two different things. Either a person can get a misapprehension of me given limited information based on a, a limited exposure to me or my content, or they can have an accurate portrayal of who I am and how I conduct myself and my content, but they can have standards of a toxicity that I don't agree with because I don't consider myself a toxic person. But the accurate understanding of me, they would still conclude me as being toxic. Looking back and hoping I haven't wasted my life. That dude yesterday who mentioned that his, uh, his grandfather died at 61 or whatever. I'm, I just hope that I don't look back in 10 years and think I've wasted my life or something. Like, I, I, that would just suck so much. Getting to the end of your life, looking back and going, man, that was a fucking waste, you know? Like, I look back at a lot of my early 20s or whatever. The, the time I played World of Warcraft, I, I look back at that, that and think that was a fucking waste. I don't think it's likely, I'm likely to do that with, with this stage of my life. I find this stage of my life so fulfilling. True, you can always look at, look at it that way, where had my past been different, maybe I wouldn't be where I am right now. So it wasn't really a waste because it was a necessary prerequisite for my current life, you know? Always think about things as the glass being half full. The ever-increasing expectations of YouTube content. My content has definitely improved. Oh, yeah, it absolutely has. Every day I learn new stuff, new things. My presentation gets better. My editing gets better. As it is with any job that you do, right? It's also the case that with every passing year, people's standards for content get higher, right? Like content that was like the best shit five years ago. You can watch it now and be like, oh, yeah, this is still pretty good. But it's just pretty good. It's harder to get into content creation every year because people's standards are so much higher. But then again, it is easier every year to make content that at least visually or audibly is, is better, right? You can get hardware and software that uh, enables you to do things that took infinitely more work even a couple of years ago. Good quality hardware five years ago will cost you a thousand dollars. Good quality hardware now can cost like a hundred, two hundred, right? The entry level stuff five years ago was garbage. The entry level stuff now is pretty good. And there's just a lot more information out there that you can uh, read and look at if you're really committed to learning stuff. It doesn't matter what hardware you have or how much you read, like just experience matters. And so when you're starting out, you're just a, a major disadvantage compared to those who've been in the game for so many years. The impossible standards creators are held to. I saw that someone commented they feel like you're more of a prick than a good guy and I completely disagree. While you are definitely brash at times, you own up to your mistakes, which proves you care. 
I've told this before, people have different standards of what it means to be a prick and, 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 and not, right? And it's just, uh, it's just life, uh, being a content creator. And I've found, as I've gotten larger, people hold larger content creators to standards that are so high that they would never hold anyone to. As a content creator, you are expected to be orders of magnitude better than the average person in terms of your conduct. Stuff that regular people do every day, if you do, people will think you're a complete piece of shit. A admittedly, there is more responsibility and you do impact people more, so you can understand why they'd be at least somewhat of a higher standard, but I swear sometimes it feels as though people will criticize you for stuff that they themselves do, frequently, you know? It's like that rant I had once where it's like, I got angry in a video game and people were like, how? Could you ever be angry at a video game? I'm like, motherfuckers, I'm sure you get angry at video games all the fucking time. Relax. Let me be a normal person for five minutes. It's like I call a person the fuckwit, and they're like, how dare you use such language? It's like, have you never called a person on the internet a fuckwit before? Like, I I'm sure you have. I'm sure this is the first that you've heard. There's this uh, tendency where it's, it's cultural in Western countries. When a person acts poorly, people are more likely to assume that this is because of some internal drive or some internal fact like, oh, like this person acts poorly and they go, oh, this person's an asshole. In Eastern countries, they're more likely to think, oh, this person's acting poorly. Man, something bad must have happened to them today. Obviously, it differs from person to person. You're biased towards assuming it's internal factors or external factors as to what's causing the behavior that a person's uh, eliciting. But I hope in most cases where I do act poorly, I hope that people give me the benefit of the doubt and they're like, okay, he's having a bad day. As opposed to, man, this guy's an irredeemable asshole. I'll say all the time, I do push myself to achieve the things that I want to achieve. And uh, I do work long hours sometimes. I do days where I, I should take a day off. Maybe I, I, I don't or whatever. And sometimes I have a hard time dealing with some of the annoyances of, of what I do for a living. Um, and I act poorly. But uh, I, I think I, in general, do pretty well with it. Like, I will fully admit, like, Binge editing for 13 hours or something in a day is probably not good for you mentally. But uh, when I have my eyes set on a on completing a project, I can kind of get really sucked into it. Do I read my YouTube comments? Ever since I found out that there's a thing on the back end that shows you every comment that's been listed on your YouTube channel, whenever I have a little bit of downtime or whatever, I'll open it and just read a couple of comments and respond to people. I basically treat YouTube comments in the same way that I do Twitter. How on a little break or something, I'll uh, open the comments along with the rest of my social media. Why asking to like and subscribe works. The reason why asking people to sub increases the likelihood that they're going to sub is because people forget. When you ask them, people ask themselves the question, do I want to subscribe? Absence of that question, people may just not think about it. Like, you probably run across videos all the time that you're half watching or whatever, or that you kind of enjoy, and you just never think about hitting the like button, but the second someone asks, you go, oh yeah, I guess I can, I mean, yeah, sure, whatever. It's been proven many times over that it, that it does work to do exactly that. I'd say about 50% of the time, my liking of a video, like pressing the like button, is because a per the, the, the video itself has reminded me. Especially because I'm normally passively watching the video, like I'm not actively thinking about what's going on or that the, the video is coming to an end. I've never liked a video when a person's asked me at the beginning of a video though. I won't give a person a like unless I actually like the video. It's less that I'm liking the video because they ask, and it's more that they remind me to ask the question of whether I want to press the like button. Why everybody deserves shelter? Why do I care so much about low-income housing? There's always going to be people who find themselves in bad circumstances due to no fault of their own. But even going beyond this, I think fundamentally everyone deserves some kind of shelter. Absence, gross harm to others. I, I can't think of a circumstance where a person doesn't deserve some kind of shelter. I don't care how fucking lazy or terrible they are or whatever. They deserve a roof over their head. And certainly, having an existent foundation where people's needs are being taken care of is good for allowing them to succeed. Like if you don't have to worry about a substantial portion of your check going to rent, you can invest in that, that and other things. Or even just, just in general, lead a better life, which can improve your psychological well-being. To put it another way, every small thing that you have to worry about, every bit of struggle that you have to maintain your basic needs is time you can't spend on things related to improving yourself or improving your circumstances. If you're struggling every moment just to get by, you don't have time to uh, invest or build a business or take a risk or whatever because you're, you're, you're on the borderline of existence. 
The things we don't know we take for granted. Sometimes I seem to have a lot worse of a memory, at least in terms of my ability to recall things. I don't have great distinct memories of my past like other people seem to. When I have some need to join together facts, I can do that. But distinct memories of my past, like personal past, seems very hard for me sometimes. Like it's just, it's just weird seeing people sometimes recounting stories and as though they're like reliving their past as they like regale everyone. Like, oh, I remember this one time, March 1954. It was bloody, I, 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 I don't know. I've said it many times, like, I wish I could experience what it's like to be another person. How their brain works or how their body feels like because people are so diverse in terms of how their minds work and how their bodies work and stuff and like you can read reddit posts about people where, like the question would be something like what's a weird quirk of your body and people are like oh you know like whenever i take four steps my left knee pops not sure what that's about but it just happens or well, i saw a post yesterday where a guy he believed that it was normal for a person's libido. Oh, it's normal for a person to get sexually aroused after they do exercise. And, it, it, and so his entire life, he thought everyone experienced this. So he'd, uh, before having sex, he'd like go for a run with his partner. It took, it took 30 years for him to realize that this isn't a normal thing. So his entire life, he'd been making like his partners go for runs or exercise and shit before sex for fucking no reason. <laughs> And so he'd, he'd confronted his exes about this, and they were like, yeah, I, I just thought you were really into yourself. Like, <laughs> it's like, I felt so fucking embarrassed. That's what I mean, right? You just, there are things that each of us probably takes for granted or, or, or just assumes about our everyday lives that we think this is common for everyone that, is, that isn't true. It's like when people find out that like, like people will either sit down or stand up to wipe their ass when they go to the bathroom. And when they find out that other people don't do what they do, they go, what? Really? No way. <laughs> simple things like that, you know? Your lived everyday experience, even in simple things, isn't necessarily the same for everyone else, you know? I didn't want to get into a conversation about that chat. I'm sorry for bringing it up. Whatever you do is acceptable. You should not have a problem with swear words. It is very clear to me that I have a different idea of what is normal, acceptable content than potentially most advertisers do. I was like, how, I'm like, how could you possibly see this as problematic? And because, uh, I mean, I, I, I play a, well, I'm Australian and I play this game all day. Like, uh, what kind of content seems irregular to me will be different from the average person. It still boggles my mind that people exist who can care about swear words or that the concept of swear words exists in society. It's nonsense. No words are inherently offensive. No word has an inherent meaning. It just misunderstands words. The only reason some words are more offensive than others is social convention, and therefore the social conventions can change. What is an, what is an offensive word today was not necessarily an offensive word 50 years ago, and it won't necessarily be an offensive word 50 years from now. What matters is what is being communicated by the word. And why swear words are weird is because it doesn't matter the context or what you're communicating with the swear word. In fact, most swear words are just pointless filler words. They're just something to mindlessly communicate a particular feeling of like annoyance or what have you. There are some words that literally have no meaning except to be filler words to communicate something like, like sodding. Look up what sodding means. It, it, it's just, it's just a, a, a filler thing. The foolishness of being purely results oriented. Thoughts on the person that has 220 million worth of Bitcoin, but can't access it due to forgetting his password? Oh, that is such a sad story. That apparently there's a guy who has this, this Bitcoin wallet with Bitcoin that's now worth over $200 million or something. But he's forgotten the password. And he, he gets 10 tries at trying to get in. And if he fails all 10 times, it's locked forever. There's no way to access it. It's encrypted beyond... Recovery. And I think he's used eight of the ten tries. When you hear stories like that, you, 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 this is an old wives' tale. There's no way that could actually happen. Uh, but apparently it's true. What would you do in that situation? Like, you just hate every day, whether these are old wives' tales or not. Like, conceptually, this could happen where you go to work 
and they have like a weekly lottery thing where everyone chips in five bucks and everyone buy everyone gets a lottery ticket for the for the group or whatever. And one dude one week is like, nah, I I need to save money. I'm not gonna chip in this five bucks or whatever a week. I gotta save all the money that I can. And then like that week or whatever, the the group lottery ticket wins millions and everyone gets like a million dollars. And you and the guys just seeing that like, oh my fucking god, dude. If I had just joined in that one extra time, I would have made the money as well. Like these events where people miss amazing opportunities or lose massive amounts of money by like a hair difference must happen every day. You would, you would never want to trade places with any of these people, you know? In the same way that doing the irresponsible thing or do, going against the grain or whatever can sometimes give you huge benefit in the future in terms of just, you just get lucky. The opposite can be true. You can do the perfectly responsible thing the thing that makes the most sense that in the overwhelming vast majority of cases in the long term will provide you benefit. And just because of bad luck, uh, you know, if you had gone against the grain, if you had done the stupid thing, if you had been irresponsible, you would have gained a, a huge windfall, you know. In those situations, though, it's always at least some comfort where you think to yourself like, oh, you know, I, I sure I could have done this stupid thing. But if I if I did that stupid thing or if I if I continuously acted my entire life doing the stupid thing, then over the long term, I would lose out. It's like with poker, how. You can see they're going, oh man, if I had just gone all in with 8-3, I would have won the entire pot and won the entire game. Because the, the flop comes 8-8-3 or whatever. But if you if you went all in with 8-3 every time you played poker, in the overwhelming vast majority of cases, you'd lose, you know? The huge market of non-English live streaming. The non-English speaking live streaming world is uh, blowing up crazily. Like, you remember the... I showed that on stream, right? The Someone did, like, a an analysis of the largest content creators on Twitch and how they connect to each other. I was on... I was on the page, but I was on, in, like, my own little circle by myself. No connections to anyone. But there was this huge section of just Spanish content creators who had basically effectively no connection to anyone else, but were just, like, a huge part of the platform. Being bilingual is uh, certainly, it certainly has uh, advantages in terms of, you know, you can just um, easier reach more audiences, right? Do I watch Spanish content creators? No, because I don't speak Spanish. And even then, the the content that they'd make would not be of particular interest to me. As in, like, uh, the content that is popular in the, with the Spanish content creators is the same content that's very popular with the English ones and uh, stuff I don't watch, you know, Rust and Fortnite and uh, all the shooters and stuff. Yeah, the Greg or whatever his name is, um, did set the uh, highest live streaming record on uh, Twitch. Actually, I think he has like three, three of the top fifteen largest streams that have ever been done or something. You don't speak English and you see me, uh, said with perfect English. Seventy-five percent of Germans can't speak English. Really? I thought um, being bilingual with English was very common in Germany. Like uh, young people, I, I thought in school it was required to learn English and German. Is that not true? Yeah, like, I, like I'm, to, to my understanding, with a lot of these smaller European countries, it's common, or at least not uncommon, for um, the older generations to only speak, you know, German or or whatever. But the younger generations all learn English in school. Like English is the uh, cross-border language or whatever. Well, someone Google how many, how many, what percentage of people speak English as a second language in Germany? Just Google it. Literally everyone in Europe who is 10 to 35 speaks English. 63% of Germans can speak English. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. I mean, as uh, India and China continue to uh, branch out and, and grow as uh, superpowers or whatever, knowing a, a language that can communicate with those markets is uh, uh, would seemingly be very good. Although, of course, speaking English in, in those countries, I'm sure, is uh, at least somewhat common. I, I saw some video of uh, some ordinary gamer talking about his upbringing or whatever, and talking about how his family made sure that he knew their native language as well as English, and he wants to do the same for his kids, and he considers it to be an advantage, which I agree with. Has investing just become a giant meme? The more of these investing stories that hit the news, the more that investing just seems like one big meme. It's just a joke. People will invest in stuff based on, like, tweets or like someone randomly mentioning shit so elon musk mentioned signal on twitter people bought a stock called signal for some random company 
And the stock just went up like 100, 200%, whatever the fuck it was. A lot of money. And Elon Musk wasn't talking about this company. He was talking about the app Signal, which is kind of like a competitor to whatever messenger fucking service. Instagram. Is it WhatsApp or something? It went up 638%. Yeah, and he, and he was just talking about a competitor to WhatsApp. It just seems so dumb. And now Dogecoin, for those who don't know, Dogecoin is basically a joke cryptocurrency that people made it kind of a real thing, but it's worth like a fraction of a fraction of a cent per coin. But now that it's kind of getting memed on Reddit and on Twitter, it's now actually going up in price because people are just talking about it. Like, well, if people are talking about it, it must have some value then. So I'm going to get in that too as well. And just, it all, it all seems so dumb. Is, is not investment at its core meant to be about reallocating capital into the hands of stuff that will actually provide benefit to society? Isn't that, like, meant to be the point of the stock market? And is it investment in general as it's- as it benefits- is meant to benefit society? You're meant to f find someone who needs money to make something of value, in, in, innovate or grow a business like, and connect them with a person who has money who wants to get involved in something like that. That's that's kind of the, the point, right? But that doesn't seem to be what investment is now. Investment now just seems like memes and bots and manipulating fucking markets with money. Like, you have so much money that you, if your, your mere utterance of what you're going to invest in can influence whether that stock goes up or down. It just all seems so dumb. But the people who seem to make the most money with this shit is rich people. And so nothing's gonna change because the rich people won't let that shit change, you know? Is it? No, I'm, I'm not saying that that's how things are. I'm saying that this is the justification given for how things are. As in, it's like, well, we, we need things to be this way so X, Y, and Z can happen. You look at it and go, but X, Y, and Z isn't happening. Y you're talking shit. And it just becomes, with every passing day, more and more apparent, apparent that, that how things are doesn't make actually much sense. And the justifications for how things are aren't very good. Is an investment similar to gambling? In the sense of risk, certainly. Anything where you have a chance of getting more or less of something of value and the future is uncertain could be considered a form of gambling. It just depends on your definition of gambling. I mean, well, there's multiple definitions of gambling. Some that are broad and some of them are thin. What's what I'm looking for here? Broad versus narrow. There you go. He is, he is a good opposite of broad, guys. Not broad. <laughs> I mean, I'm not wrong. You know the opposite of narrow, guys? Not narrow. <laughs> <laughs> the Shrek Epidemic. Yeah, whenever I think of onions, I too think of Shrek. Haven't seen that movie in a trillion years. And I still remember so many lines from it. That movie, when it came out, was fucking everywhere. Like, you'd go over a friend's house, and they'd be watching Shrek. A teacher wants to put on a movie or something, you have a free day or whatever, they put on fucking Shrek. The movie was in the cinemas for like a trillion years. Everyone had it on DVD, VHS, fucking kids getting Shrek tattoos. People would write fucking reports in school on Shrek. It's crazy. All I know about Shrek is the donkey fucked a dragon. I think it's pretty fucking weird for a kids movie. True. Wait, but does that mean it wouldn't be weird for an adults movie? Donkey fucking a dragon, that's weird for a kids movie, but an adults movie? Yeah, that's just everyday shit. <laughs> no one appreciates my friendo edits. I edited myself, No Country for Old Men, but I added Frendo a bunch more times. You know that scene? You've, you may have seen the scene even if you haven't seen the whole movie. What's the most you've ever bet on a coin toss? I edited that so he says Frendo far more, and it's actually a nice conversation. Didn't get that many views, but I found it funny. I put it on Twitter in my, um, clip channel. How much Frendo? 69, see? Y'all getting any rain up here, Wayne? What way would that be, friendo? I seen you was from Dallas. That's the way it is, friendo. Is something wrong? With what? With anything. Is that what you're asking me, friendo? You don't know what you're talking about, friendo? Just passing the time. What time do you go to bed, friendo? Somewhere around 9.30, I'd, I'd say around 9.30. Well done, friendo. Will there be something else? I don't know, will there, friendo?
Well, I got to close now. Friendo. It's a bit of a meme, me saying friendo. I'm not sure what brought it on or why I say it, but uh, I like it. I like it. Friendo, you should like and subscribe to the channel, friendo. Thanks for watching, friendo. I wish you all the best, friendo.